The strap incision to perform an extended deltoid split approach is especially useful in an obese patient. The patient is placed in a B-chair position with the image intensifier from the opposite side, allowing the surgeon to take a true AP and a modified axial view of the shoulder. This obese patient has a two-part surgical neck fracture displaced into varus. The inverted U incision is marked on the skin with the summit at the tip of the acromion. The course of the axillary nerve from the tip of the acromion is around 4 to 6 cm. The limbs of the U should be of adequate length to allow the use of a 3 volt phyllos plate. Further screws into the distal segment can be inserted through stab incisions. Full thickness skin flaps are raised without undermining the flap. Bleeding vessels should be cauterized. Further bleeding from the flap can be minimized by infiltrating the skin with local anesthetic mixed with epinephrine prior to the skin incision. The skin flap is raised distally to the predetermined length to allow safe fracture reduction and plate fixation. The approach provides excellent lateral access to the shoulder due to easier deltoid retraction since the skin is completely moved out of the way. The incision also yields well as it is situated along the relaxed skin tension lines of the shoulder. The anterior lateral deltoid raphae is identified between the anterior and middle portions of the muscle. It represents a watershed line providing a relatively avascular plane. The proximal working window is created by splitting the muscle for a distance of around 4 cm from the tip of the acromion. The subdeltoid plane should be cleared of adhesions to allow easy retraction and enhance exposure. The axillary nerve is identified by palpation through the proximal window with the limb in slight abduction. The distal window is created after identification of the nerve. Around 1 cm of the deltoid muscle is left as a cuff to protect the nerve from inadvertent injury during the procedure. A right angle clamp is then used to feed a wire loop around the nerve to protect it throughout the entire procedure. The subdeltoid bursa is then incised to expose the proximal fracture lines and to perform fracture reduction and fixation. Heavy non-absorbable sutures using number 5 ethy bond are placed in the superior anterior and posterior regions of the rotator cuff at the cuff bone junction. These sutures are used to maneuver the humeral head during fracture reduction and are finally anchored to the plate to increase the stability of fixation. Additional sutures in the anterior and posterior part of the cuff can also be placed to help reduce the tuberosities to one another in three and four part fractures. 
This two-part surgical neck fracture with varus displacement is reduced by pulling on the traction sutures to bring the humeral head out of varus. The humeral shaft is simultaneously pushed medially under the humeral head. Once satisfactory reduction is confirmed, K wires are inserted from the top of the greater tuberosity into the medial calcar to provisionally hold the reduction. Placement of K wires should be as such that they do not interfere with definitive fixation. A similar two part fracture can also be reduced by using an AO reduction clamp. In cases with significant medial shaft displacement due to the pull of the pectoralis major muscle, a 3.5 mm cortical screw can be placed as a reduction screw through the proximal oblong hole of the distal segment of the phyllos plate. This screw is used to pull the shaft under the humeral head. You should however be careful not to pull the shaft too laterally which will leave the humeral head unsupported on the medial side. In case of 3 and 4 part fractures, varus displacement of the humeral head can be reduced by using the cuff sutures and then securing the head to the shaft with K wires. Two K wires are typically placed, one from the tip of the greater tuberosity to the medial shaft and one from the anterior aspect of the distal shaft into the humeral head. The tuberosities are then reduced to one another by using additional traction cuff sutures placed in the anterior and posterior part of the rotator cuff. The sutures are passed into the eyelets of the plate before inserting it as it may become difficult to pass it later on. The plate is then slid safely under the axillary nerve and secured onto the proximal humerus. After securing it with K wires, fracture reduction and position of the plate are confirmed by fluoroscopy in both planes. It is made sure the plate is centered on the humeral head and shaft at an appropriate height from the top of the humeral head. After confirming the position of the calcar screws in the anteroposterior view, the proximal portion of the plate is typically fixed first with multiple locking screws. Screw placement into the humeral head should be as subchondral as possible and should be confirmed with sounding and fluoroscopy. The divergent screws in row C of the phyllos plate should be carefully placed into the humeral head to avoid intraarticular penetration. The inframedial calcar screws which are important in resisting varus deformation especially in 3 and 4 part fractures should be placed as inferiorly as possible to provide the desired effect. Finally, the traction cuff sutures are secured to the plate to complete fixation.